covenant with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together to receive this bread of life. And by your divine touch upon us, you have given us this basic privilege in the new covenant. As many that are here that are yet to have this relationship with Christ, this covenant, you know, commitment to Christ. Lord, as we have prayed in unity, let the blood of Jesus, that is, Father, better than the blood of bull, the blood of Abel, let this blood wash them and make them whiter than snow and save them to the uttermost in Jesus' name. And for we believers, Lord, we bring our hearts before you that, Lord, you will sanctify us. Every hardened heart, every stony heart, every self-will, every worldliness, every kind of stubbornness to the will of God, to the word of God, flush them out of us and make us new lump, holy and righteous, that will spend the rest of our lives in holiness and righteousness, serving you without fear in Jesus' name. And all the blessings of the new covenant, open heaven and download them into to our lives in Jesus' name. That everywhere we go, we are blessed and will be a channel of blessing. And there shall be showers of blessings in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you've answered. As we go in this mind, let the blessing of the Lord continue to increase in our lives. As we decree and declare, this is our year of divine increase. Increase on every side. Numerically, you will add to the church such as to be saved. Spiritually, you will increase us. Financially, you will increase us. Maritally, you will increase us. And in every area, there will be increase in line and everywhere. The equation. No God in their planning. They, they don't even have any space for God. No space for spiritual pain. No space for spiritual exercise. No space for spiritual gymnastics. And when the devil sees their goals and the devil and the devil is happy, it's happy that no God in their equation. And then while they are trying to execute their plans and their goals, the devil does not even respect grammar. He does not respect grammar. He does not respect that somebody is living in one country or the other. Before you know it, he came in that one, he came in that one, he destroyed that one, he destroyed that one. It brings problem to the family. Why? Because these people have edged God out. We don't want to make such mistake this year. We are praying and asking the Lord to show us the way. And God revealed his secret to us now. It's a secret that the meek will show the way. The meek. Pastor, let's be meek. Pastor, let's be meek. Pastor, let's be meek. Let's be meek. Let's be meek. Let's be meek. Let's talk to God in prayer. We will be meek. Well, we are not meek enough, oh God, make us meek. Well, we are not meek enough, enough, oh God, make us meek. We must be like Christ in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Lowly in heart there means I am humble in heart. Lowly in heart there means that I am not the type that have what we call self exaltation, self egocentric. They're egocentric. And all those self uh, upliftment. And all that, I am not the type. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's my prayer. Myself and yourself, the Lord will show us the way. We will not miss the way. We will not go the wrong direction. Can we pray one more prayer on this? Very important prayer. We don't want to miss our guy. We don't want to miss our way. I'd like to leave one more prayer point. Before I come back to the, the main passage, I, I thought that we will read a lot of scripture. I want to go to Isaiah very quickly. Isaiah chapter 30, and we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30, in verse 21. And the scriptures say here, and that ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Hallelujah. But then I said, Hallelujah. And that ear shall hear a word behind thee. This is the way. I tell you a story very quickly. It was one of our pastors then on campus. And Pastor Lori by name in the University of Benin. He told us a story. I don't know, I cannot forget this story in my life. I will never forget this story till I die. 
He was standing somewhere in Lagos, and then the Holy Ghost spoke to him to leave that place. He was standing at a junction, a particular uh, bus stop or junction, something like that. I think it should be a bus stop. Maybe he, I think he wanted to enter a, a bus. If you are used to Lagos very well, although there are terminals and all of that, those uh, bus stops and all that. And then so he was standing. And the Lord told him, the Lord told him, the Lord spoke, the Holy Ghost spoke, and then that he should leave. And then as he left that particular place, um, uh, a vehicle, whether bus or Molue, or I don't know what, what came, and it was something else. That would probably be the end of Pastor Olori, but he heard the Lord. He heard clearly, and he left immediately as the Lord instructed. God knows the end from the beginning. If you were if you follow the answer the Lord, uh, the GS gave today at Bagada. Uh, yes, I connected from my district to Bagada Church for the STS and even the summary that was anchored by a pastor and then Pastor Kumoy came to clarify issue of predestination. Now, but that's not where we are going. But the point I'm making here is that we need to hear. And I hear shall hear a word behind it. There are deaths some people die. It's as a result of not hearing. It's as a result of not receiving proper guidance in life. We will not walk into trouble this year. We will not walk into trouble. Oh God, I, ah, what a we, we will not walk into trouble. There are people that walk into trouble. It's when they enter that environment, they will just shoot. And then they shoot. They say, actually, uh, like what happened? Please uh, permit me to say this. On the 24th or 25th of last year, it's already last year, but it was actually last week here. Uh, here in my area, my area gone, 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 just within uh, the Ekman, not far from my place, not far. It's something I can trek, uh, let's say 15 minutes or 20 minutes to the place. And then we were told of what happened. How a young, I don't know how many of them were shooting. It, I, I, and I was told that it's not even far. Yes, we are used to their uh, shooting in uh, those areas and all that. Not exactly where I'm staying anyway. But this particular one, they were just shooting. A, a sister was not telling me at the retreat that they killed my neighbor too. They killed my neighbor. So it's not as if the neighbor did anything. It's a woman. He just shot. As in just uh, straight bullets. They, it's not as if maybe they were coming to kill the woman or whatever. <laughs> you can imagine Iku, Iku Sarah. We will not die, Iku, Sarah, in Jesus' name. Sarah dead. It's like using someone as an experiment. Using someone like uh, like uh, becoming a victim of circumstance. That's what we are saying. Maybe if that woman knew, and maybe she would have probably left that place of trouble, and she would not have experienced that and just died like that and left this world. Somebody that would have seen New Year, now she could not see New Year because of what we are talking about. And so we want to pray right now, our ear we hear. We will be intimate with God to hear God clearly. Go this way. Oh, don't go there, my son. There's danger. Oh, my daughter, don't go there. The Lord will speak to our children. Our children will be hearing God from their childhood. Go this way. Don't go there. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. They will hear it in their tree. They will hear it on their own. They will hear it. Let's pray for our children. They will not be dull of hearing. As pastors and leaders, we will hear God distinctly. We will not be doing permutation and combination. We will not be applying psychology. You know what some people do is that they apply psychology. Uh, uh, the, maybe the, where they have meeting where there are crowd and there's somebody here, you have edict and all that. Of course, somebody may have edict among the crowd. Uh, what is edict? Uh, there's somebody here, you have uh, this one. General thing that people may likely have and all that. Not all those kind of permutation and combination. We are talking of the one you hear clearly from God. Clearly from God. Clearly. Yeah, you, it's unmistaken. Unmistaken. Thy ear shall hear a word behind thee. Oh God, my ear will not be blocked. In 2023, I will hear you clearly. I will hear you clearly. My God, my God, my God. This is the prayer to pray. For this new year, this is the kind of prayer to pray. Our ear shall hear a word behind us. This is the way. Those of all the children who are up to the age of marriage, they will hear, they will not settle down for Opeke. There are a lot of Opeke sisters in the church. People who are just sanctimonious, not born again. They are just there. They can dress where they are tush in their dressing. They are beautiful, but they are godless. They are void of righteousness and holiness. And they are they are wicked in art. 
There are brothers that are like Absalom in the church. They can dress well, but they are Absalom. Our daughters will not fall into the hand of those Absalom. They will not fall into the hand of Jonadab. They will not fall into the hand of Naba, the husband of Abigail. God forbid, in the name of Jesus, our children will hear a word behind them. This is the way. They will not follow friends that will destroy and waste them. They will not follow friends that will destroy their destiny. We as pastors and leaders, we will hear words. And we will hear what we will hear what we will hear what we will hear what it's beautiful to be intimate with God to hear clearly and to hear clearly to hear clearly will not be doing permutation and combination will not be doing psychology and philosophy but we will rather be spiritual to hear God this is the way and walking in the ring the Lord will do it for us and his name will be glorified in Jesus name we pray let me still believe yeah. that you can hear me. Please, I like uh, a notification uh, to show that since I can't yes. hear any people in out. Okay, thank you, Akiomi. I go back to the chapter, the passage uh, we started with in Exodus chapter 33. Uh, we have taken time to look at that verse 13. So I want to leave verse 13 now. Coming to verse 14, and it said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. My presence shall go with thee. My presence shall Amen. go with thee. That's a very powerful statement. Amen. That's a very powerful statement. My presence shall Amen. go with thee. God is saying here, yeah, my presence Amen. shall go with thee. It's God that was talking. It wasn't angel talking to Moses. God said, my presence shall go with thee. I will give thee rest. Amen. Now, there is something. Before we pray for my presence will go with thee, that last part, I will give thee rest. I want to pray particularly for our pastor. There will be rest for the pastor. The rest here, please, let's get something clear. Mm -hmm. The rest here does not mean that they will just be sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and be sleeping and sleeping without uh, doing something. No, that's not what he meant to. There are three types of rest, actually, three types of rest. Number one, you find that in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. That's the rest, number one. That's the rest that comes uh, uh, to people who are not born again, who are not saved, and then they have been laboring. They, they are laboring in sin, and they, they are laboring in iniquity. They are laboring in, in unrighteousness, and they are not able to enter into, for them to enter into the rest of the Lord, the peace of God, and all that, they need rest. That one is talking of peace in their heart. There's another rest, the final rest. You find that in Abel chapter 3, in verse, uh, in verse 18. Abel chapter 3, verse 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but that they should believe no. The rest here is talking about heaven. The rest here is talking about heaven. In verse 11, so I swear in my Lord, they shall not enter into my rest. He's talking about the Beulah land. Uh, in this case, he was referring to the Canaan land, and our own Canaan land here is a land of heaven. So in between the initial rest that comes to us when we become born again, and the final rest that uh, comes to us as we get to the Beulah land in heaven, in between the initial and the final, there's, a, uh, uh, there's an opening, we call that rest. What does that mean? As a pastor, you will not struggle to pay school fee. That's rest. That's rest. I I'm sure we're following. And that you will not struggle Amen. to pay house rent if you are still a tenant. Amen. You will not struggle Amen. to take care of your wife. The finance is there. Amen. It's not a sin. You have it there with you. Now, that's the rest. And so the scripture is saying here that there will be rest. Who want to pray right now? If our pastors are falling ill and they are sick, that's not the rest. If our pastors have been hospitalized uh, or they are not able to do the will of God and the work of God, that's not the rest. God has promised here there will be rest. Who want to pray for Pastor Matthew? There will be rest. Pastor Matthew, there will be rest upon you. 
all the running up and down and running up and down, there will be rest. Rest in your soul, spiritual rest, marital rest, all the struggle, physical rest. There will be rest for our beloved Pastor Chris. On every side, in the name of Jesus Christ, our beloved Daddy, Pastor Lee, there will be rest for you. Rest on every side. The Lord said, I will give you rest. What a promise. My God, my God. My God, my God. Pastor Mike, rest is coming your way. Uh, all of us, we need rest. Pastor Bosse, you need rest. The Lord will give you rest. Rest on every side. Is it on your children? There will be rest. On your wife? There will be rest. Spiritual rest. Marital rest. Social rest. Psychological rest. Marital rest. Financial rest. Let the Lord bring rest on every side. Upon Pastor Femiujo, upon Pastor Dako, every one of our pastors, on me, I claim the rest of God. Please let's pray. The rest of God is coming our way. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Shago, receive the rest of the Lord. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I told us of the initial rest and the final rest. In between the initial and the final, the other rest that are left, the Lord we will experience. We will not battle and battle and battle battle to pay school fee, God for me. The Lord will give us outstanding job, employment. The Lord will bless us in ministry. There will be rest on every side. Favor on every side. Mercy on every side. Power on every side. Grace on every side. There will be rest. There will be rest. There will be rest. There will be rest. The reason why you find some brethren, yes, it's good to fast 21 days, 36 days, and all those days, but the reason many fast and fast and fast is because there is no rest, struggle and pain and tears and agony. That is the reason they do all of the, some of those things. Some of those things, it is not to get more anointing. No, they don't have is issues are just piling up in the family. And then they needed to go to the mountain. For you, you will have rest. If I thought you will wait on the Lord, it will be on spiritual issue for more anointing, for more power, for more grace, for more fire, for more vigor. It will not be to pay school fees. It will not be to settle employment. No, the Lord will give you rest on every side. Are we praying? Are you talking to God? Do you know this is the first day? Do you know it's very strategic? Do you know when we are, what we are asking the Lord now is very important? Do you know it's very strategic? If you are praying, talk to God. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want a lively amen. 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 I believe people are. Now, I want to pray very quickly. We're not done with that verse 14. And it says, for my presence. Okay, I've left there. So, uh, it was, let me come back again. God's presence shall be with us as we pray, as we minister. The presence of the Lord will be so real upon us. Yes, in the name of Jesus, God will lay his hand on us. God's presence as in our place of work. God's presence on the road. God's presence everywhere. It's not only when we are in church and preaching that God's presence ought to be with us. God is omnipresent, omniscience, and omnipotent. He's everywhere. So his presence should be with us everywhere. And what that means is that you, <laughs> you become a terror to the power of darkness. What that means is that all this one they call.